Commons are often portrayed as archaic relics of a distant past or as a primitive pre-modern tradition that's no longer relevant. Commons are sometimes criticized as grossly inefficient and impractical. Economists routinely claim that sharing wealth usually results in the tragedy of the commons. All of these claims are simply false. We'll return to the tragedy fable in a moment, but let's start with a basic fact. Commons have been around from the beginning of human history. Evolutionary scientists have documented that humans have survived and advanced only as a species that has cooperation. We humans are a social species, one that instinctively wants to share and collaborate. It's how, over the course of millennia, we've developed language, art, tools, agriculture, cities. The most vivid history of the commons, at least in the West, revolves around the folk hero Robin Hood. In the 13th century England, a series of kings began to seize larger and larger plots of forest land for hunting, timber, and recreation. This was a big deal for commoners because they depended on the forest to heat their homes, to fatten their cattle and pigs, and to capture wild game. King John was particularly brutal about punishing anyone who ventured into his royal forests by imposing fines, imprisonment, and sometimes death. After years of armed conflict, King John in 1215 grudgingly agreed to a kind of peace treaty, the Magna Carta, which has become a landmark document in Western civilization. The Magna Carta recognized many fundamental legal rights of citizens for the first time. It also affirmed the rule of law and limits on the power of the sovereign, ideas now reflected in modern constitutions and human rights conventions. But there was also a near-forgotten companion document, the Charter of the Forest, which legally recognized the rights of commoners to use lands and forests as they traditionally had. The food, timber, plants, and medicinal herbs that were essential to their survival came from the commons, and commoners insisted on setting the rules for managing their own landscapes. This history may seem like merely colorful folk history, but its basic patterns prefigure our own times, in which corporations and nation-states are privatizing for rich people vast amounts of land, water, forests, fisheries, minerals, and much else. These seizures of our commonwealth through corporate or state power are called enclosures of the commons. There was an anonymous folk poem in the 18th century that explained this process really quite well. It goes, The law locks up the man and woman who steals the goose from off the common, but lets the greater villain loose who steals the common from the goose. The law demands that we atone when we take things we do not own, but leaves the lords and ladies fine who take things that are yours and mine. While this history is a Western experience, it has to be emphasized that commoning and enclosures were an ancient prehistorical phenomenon as well. Commons existed in pre-Roman Iron Age societies and in India and Mongolia. An estimated 2 billion people today depend on forest, pastures, fisheries, farmland, water, wild game managed as commons. With the rise of market capitalism in the late 18th century, commons have suffered a serious decline, however, thanks to the rise of globe-spanning corporations, new expansions of property rights, and technologies of control. Capitalist markets are laying claim to the entire earth, our communities, even our consciousness. They're poisoning the soil, drying up lakes and rivers, and causing massive extinctions of species. Even the atmosphere is treated as a free waste dump, disrupting modern civilization and causing serious uh, concerns about its future. It's revealing that modern economics textbooks don't mention enclosures. They see the relentless expansion of markets as social progress and freedom. The larger the markets become, the greater the output of stuff and the greater freedom for humanity, or so goes the uh, catechism that we hear from capitalists, politicians, and economists. In a bizarre turnabout, conventional economics actually blames the commons for being destructive. You've probably heard of the tragedy of the commons phrase. That term was popularized by biologist Garrett Hardin in a famous essay published in 1968. The basic point was that a group of farmers could never manage sustainably a shared pasture because 
everyone would supposedly let their sheep and cattle onto the pasture, and with no one having a so-called rational incentive to hold back, everyone would take as much as they could and overexploit it, producing the so-called tragedy of the commons. But in fact, Garrett Hardin wasn't describing a commons. He was describing an open access regime, a selfish free-for-all in which there is no community, no communication or negotiation among people, no rules, no punishment for breaking rules. This isn't a commons. It's more accurate to say that Hardin was describing the tragedy of the market. It fell to a renegade political scientist, Professor Eleanor Ostrom, to debunk the tragedy smear as a a fable with little empirical grounding. Ostrom entered the scene in the 1970s and 1980s as economics was becoming a kind of religious fundamentalism, obsessed with rational individualism, so-called private property rights, and the application of market norms to everything. She took a broader perspective on humankind. Hundreds of scholars went out and did extensive field work in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, and they confirmed the -the on-the-ground realities of cooperation. Ostrom went on to identify the principles that enable successful commons to flourish and endure, work that won her the Nobel Prize for Economic Sciences in 2009. A global network of scholars, the International Association for the Study of the Commons, continues to do this work today. But at the same time, on a parallel track about 20 years ago, a growing core of modern commoners were coming into being. People began to rediscover the power and satisfactions of social collaboration. That will be the focus of our next video.